Once again, welcome to another live session of the Potter's Gate online broadcast. My name is Isaiah Phillips and Kintola. I hope you had a wonderful night rest. Uh, this morning, once again, we are going to continue to look into the Word of God. The Spirit of the Lord is impressing something very, very important and relevant to us in this new day as we continue to press further into the reality of God's will and purpose for us for this new day. And I'm excited in the direction to which the Spirit of the Lord is leading us. I believe God is bringing us to a point where we are beginning to understand what it takes, what it means, what it entails to be able to advance in the realities of that which is impressing all right, to his church in this new day. And I believe that as we continue to do that, we will receive greater wisdom, grace, and knowledge to be able to proceed further. All right, I'm just posting the link so people can follow us uh, on the radio uh, this morning. All right, so yesterday, in fact, for the past two days, the Spirit of the Lord has been impressing upon my heart. And I believe that if you've been tracking with me, thank you, Brother Desmond, for joining. I believe that if you've been tracking with me, you will notice that there has been this push against the spirit of accusation. And I believe this is something that we need to really look into as the day of the Lord continue to dawn on us as the, the, the visibility of the kingdom, as the realities of, 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 of the coming of Christ becomes more eminent. We need to begin to track all right, the, the, the spirit, the, the, the characters that, you know, hindered men all right, from com com completing that which, you know, the Lord gave to them. And you, you will agree with me that if we search scripture and uh, we, we really allow the Lord to speak to us, we will find, we will find paths, we will find tracks, we will find, all right, directions within the word of the Lord that will help us to be able to identify the various kinds of, you know, spirit that hindered people from coming into, you know, the, 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 the reality of, you know, their, their assignment. And if there's anything that I'm concerned, if there's anything I'm concerned about in the days that we live in, all right, is for us to assume, is for us to assume, thank you, Sister Barbara, for joining, is for us to assume that we have all that it takes to be able to advance into, you know, the next, uh, you know, uh, realities of God without really checking the word of God and studying and finding, all right, what stopped men, all right, from coming into the realities of God's plan and purpose for their life. I, I think it would be a disservice for us in our day, in this day where there's so much, you know, expectation, all right, you know, upon the church, upon us that they represent the things of the spirit. I believe that we cannot make the same mistake that, you know, the men of old have made, even the past move have made that we've got to be able to look back and track and trace what sank their ship, what stopped them, what, what made these captains to, you know, to fall into the ship and get drowned. We have to be able to look into the word of God and find, all right, where they missed it. The Bible says these things happen to them as an example, as an example for us, all right? The church in the wilderness are example for us today to learn, all right? The things that happen in the life of great men, if you look at the people like, you know, uh, um, Moses, why, why, why didn't he, why, why wasn't he able to enter into the full realities of God's purpose for his life? So many like that, you can begin to look into their life. And I believe that if we begin to allow the spirit of God, particularly in this day where heaven is highlighting and bringing out fresh the spirit of wisdom, knowledge and understanding, revelation. I mean, heaven is open and the Lord is pouring into our heart once again. Amen. Things that will allow us to be able to find, to track and to trace. Amen what made others fail amen so that we can learn from those things and be able to move further and i believe there's any spirit that we need to really take time to look into and really address is the spirit of accusation this spirit you know the more i i look at it and i talk about it the more i see the more i realize how powerful this spirit is and the more i see how this spirit you know has really hindered so many in fact at the, this morning while i was praying and i was just you know studying and praying I realized that this spirit actually began in the garden. This spirit began, we began to see the operations of this spirit in the garden, all the way back in the garden. And like I was sharing yesterday, that we didn't just see this spirit operating out there. I mean, we see this spirit also showing up in the book of Revelation. 
The Bible talks about the spirit called the accuser of the brethren who stands before God day and night accusing the brethren before God. I mean, this is how powerful the spirit is. So this, we're not just talking, talking about some, you know, you know, one little demon here. We're talking about a principality. If you ask me, I believe accusation is a major principality. And you know that a principality works through a principle. I mean, the, 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 the paths of darkness, particularly principality, they walk through principles. I mean, they've got values. They, they've got operating systems that they work with. And wherever they're able to establish their operating system, guess what? They will always get the same result. They will always get resumed. And they've, not, they've never failed. But if we are going to enter, if we're going to complete our journey, if we're going to enter into that scope amen, of perfected redemption, if we're going to come into the nearness, the Bible says, look up your redemption, draw near. If we're going to come into that nearness where we can see the visibility all right, of, of our redemption, then we've got to challenge this spirit headlong. We have to be determined that this spirit will not get us. We have to believe God for grace, for wisdom, for strength. We have to track and trace the word of God and find principles and pattern to be able to address this spirit because I tell you this spirit is not going to give up no no this spirit is not going to give up the spirit will continue the bible says when the enemy came all right to attack Jesus after you know his, his fasting and prayer the bible says he left him for a season he left him for a season in other words I'm coming back I'm coming back. And guess what? He came back in Gethsemane. He came back in Gethsemane. So we, we, we cannot be naive. We cannot just fold our hand and think, well, I've dealt with this thing and it's fine. No, no, no. It's not fine. Yes, we may have victory today, but we need to maintain our ground. And this is why I'm emphasizing this, you know, this concept that we need to maintain our ground. I mean, the enemy came, you know, in the garden and said to Eve, did God actually say you must not eat? That was accused. That was a spirit of accusation manifesting. I mean, challenging the wisdom of God, challenging the authority of the Father, challenging all right, the, 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 sovereign, the sovereignty of God. Did God actually say you must not eat of this thing? Because God knows that the day you eat of it, you will do what? Your eyes will be open and you will see. You will be like him. So, so here is Satan, here is Lucifer challenging the very wisdom, accusing God of his wisdom before, before Eve. Saying, look, whatever you think this man has told you, whatever you think this your God has told you is a lie. You can't trust him. You cannot believe. He doesn't want you to be like him. So the question is, what was it in the heart of Eve that made her, or rather that made her so, you know, a... Uh, 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 susceptible to the lie of the enemy why did why did the enemy came to eve why what was it that satan found in eve i mean that was a question i was asking myself this morning what was it that satan found in eve all right that he could because you see this spirit was always find something you know the, the enemy don't just attack us the enemy look for a loophole the enemy will always search for something it could be just something so very insignificant very minute whatever it is you see and that is what we need to begin to look at not the big things the very little things the very little things that sometimes we don't even pay attention to those are the things all right that that the enemy you know latches on you will look for. i mean jesus just finished praying and fasting he said look you're hungry why don't you turn the stone to bread i mean it's easy you're hungry i mean the enemy knows that we're vulnerable and he will use the areas of our vulnerability vulnerability to try to attack us and i think that is where we need to begin to daily ask god you know to perfect our redemption and redemption is not just the fact that yes i'm saved i'm going to heaven or i can speak in tongues i know the word of god no redemption is that we're able to look into every aspect of our life the faculties our template our imagination our thought pattern all right the way we think the way we we, we, we we believe the way we view life you know our values our culture ideologies the things around us that we have accept as the norm the things that we don't pay attention to the things that are part of our society the things that are part of our family all right we grew up with those things but those are the very things that the enemy will look all right will find as a leeway to get into us and the plan of the enemy is to make sure that we don't get into the reality of God's eternal purpose for our life 
because the enemy knows, particularly when he knows that you're serious with the things of the kingdom. I mean, somebody like me, the enemy knows that this, this guy, Isaiah, I'm going to make sure that he doesn't enter. So he's not going to be looking for the big things because, you know, I can easily see the big things. No, he's going to be looking for the things that I don't pay attention to. The very little, little, the very, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Those are the things the enemy goes for because that's where, he, I mean, the enemy knew the vulnerability of, of, of David, David, the mighty man. He knew, he knew that he would never be able to defeat David on the battlefield. He knew that the only way he could defeat David was when he's resting. Can you imagine that you're just taking a rest? You're, you're entertaining yourself. You're, you're, you know, you're taking a nap. You're, you're just strolling. And he knew that he can find something to connect, to connect, and, and, and that's it. So, so we've got to be very alive. We've got to be awakened. We've got to be responsible, and we've got to be responsive to the Spirit. Our spirit man must be alive. We've got to believe the Lord, amen, to wake up, to allow us to be able to see. Our ears must be open. Our antenna must be clear, amen. There mustn't be any friction, any interference. There must be an understanding of the nature of the days that we live in. There is a spirit out there called the Spirit spirit of accusation and the spirit is accusing brethren not just accusing everybody i mean i was reading scripture this morning and here was paul before festus i mean the the, the, the you know the pharisee the the, the 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 priest the elders they brought you know uh, um you know uh, paul before festus you know to judge and festus said even in the roman in the roman uh, uh, law we don't we don't we don't just judge and you know you know an accuser we don't just judge them no we want we want their you know the accuser excuse me we want the accuser to come and listen amen uh, and so that both of them can have their case this is how we do things that you know we can't just pass law we will wait amen for you who is accusing Paul, we will wait for you to come so that we can look at this together. And I'm saying to this, I'm saying to myself, I said, if, 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 if the world system understand that you can't just accuse somebody without that person being there to defend himself or herself, how much more we in the church, what are we doing to ourselves? So that tells you that we're dealing with a spirit because this spirit doesn't care. This spirit doesn't mind. This spirit is just there to make sure that yes, you've been accused and therefore you must be judged. And like I was saying yesterday, all right, I mean, somebody sent me, a, 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 you know, a, a message, sent me a message on my birthday. Somehow, somehow, mysteriously, I never saw the message. I just never saw the message. I never saw the message until the day this yesterday that I decided, okay, I was going to call this person just to, you know, check how he's doing because he's a close friend. And, uh, and that was it. And I realized, my good God. Suddenly it dawned on me, wow, what a what 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 a breathing ground for accusation because the person who, I'm sure would have said, Oh, maybe this man doesn't want to talk to me. Why is he not replying? And you know, if you're not like I said, if one is not mature, if if you're not, and I can assure you all kinds of things have come out of that because because you know we we we, we we build our work with God on assumption. We build our relationship. And where there is assumption and presumption, sin is bound to be there. Where we, where, whenever we make the mistake of assuming, one of the best things that I've seen as I'm studying the word of God is the one way to deal with the spirit of accusation is confrontation. Confront that spirit. Confront the accuser. Go to the person and say, hey, what is going on? I mean, for all I care, the person could have said, Man of God, he's been how many days now? Did you get my message? Did you get my which message? I think oh, then I see. Oh, but you see, when we leave things, to, you know, to you know, to, you know, to, to to assumption, and we just okay, let's leave it. It doesn't matter. Okay, if he doesn't want to answer me, fine. No, it, it matters because the enemy is going to use that same thing. All right, he's going to sow a seed, and that's all the devil wants. He just want to sow a seed, just sow a seed of you know of you know uh, of doubt, just sow a seed of doubt in the relationship, just sow a seed. The enemy enemy is a master of sowing seed i mean he learned this thing from the father himself god is the father amen of seeding amen the word of the lord declared that as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest time life is governed by seeding amen if we if we if we learn to sow seed it's only a matter of time before we begin to reap the harvest amen and guess what seed can be positive and can be negative amen the principles of life are built on seed time and harvest time the enemy 
enemy come? The Bible said while men were sleeping, the enemy came and sowed the wrong seed among the right seed. And they broke, the, the Bible said, and they both grow together. They both grow together. <laughs> and the servant out of zeal, they said, come on, let's cut this thing off. The master said, no, you can't do that. You've got to wait for harvest time. Then we can get those that are master, those that are expert. We've got to bring the angels of the law. Amen. The messenger. And I believe those are not just ordinary angels. I believe they are the messengers of God. I believe that these are days where you and I, amen, that have been graced, that have been imparted with wisdom and understanding. We will have the capacity, the wisdom and knowledge to begin to severe, to begin to separate the shaft from the width, amen, the truth from the lie, hallelujah, the accusation from, from, from truth. These are days we have to believe God to wear the gear, to give us the wisdom, the capacity to be able to separate because these are days of harvest. In the days of harvest, we are going to be seeing all kinds of manifestation, all kinds of spirit are going to be, you know, coming up and, you know, creeping up in the place where you think, oh, we, we've got harvest here. Oh, before you begin to, uh, you know, raise your hand and give thanks for harvest, just look at that harvest. I tell you, there is a wrong seed there. I mean, within the very circle of Christ, there is a wrong seed called Judas. Judas was there among the twelve. Judas was there among the twelve. And Jesus allowed Judas to grow and mature and perfect his work. Finish what you need to do. Come on. We cannot afford to allow the enemy to take advantage of us. We will not allow in this day, hallelujah, for the enemy to go further. We will stand for the church. We will stand on behalf of the church. We will stand and we will continue to proclaim this thing that there is an enemy out there. It's called an accuser. It's called the spirit of accusation. And we will deal with that spirit as the spirit of the Lord continue to give us insight. Now, let me read the scripture. Let me read one or two scripture here. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I like the fact that the Lord is bringing this up, you know, in an atmosphere of intercession. Because this is not something I planned. I, I did, in fact, I did not plan to talk about accusation. No, I did not. I was just dealing with prayer. From prayer, we finished prayer. Then I began to deal with intercession. We began to deal with in the spirit of intercession. And from there, suddenly, the Lord began to, you know, ju just began to open my eyes, all right, to, you know, to accusation. It wasn't something that I planned. It's not in, it's, in fact, it, it's, it wasn't in my note when I began until I realized, oh, come on, the Lord is saying something here. Then I began to pay attention. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then I began to pay more attention. So, so I believe this is something God is highlighting. This is something that God wants us to deal with. God wants us to understand as we begin to step into what we call the new day of the Lord. I mean, if we're going to go on with God, if we're going to step into the next reality of God's prophetic agenda for our life, we cannot afford, amen, not to deal with this prayer. And we cannot afford to ignorantly just sweep through this thing and just, okay, we'll, because I tell you, as long as you have people, as long as you have people, amen, working around you, as long as you have, you live within circles of, you know, friends and colleagues and family, there will always be friction. And that friction, you can trace it in most cases to you know, accusation and accusation will, like I said yesterday, sometimes will begin amen, from miscommunication. Just because there's a miscommunication, somebody gets accused. How many times, amen, in, in, in the war system have people been accused and jailed for the wrong thing? I mean, I mean people have been people have been jailed for a crime they never committed because somebody did not do their work, their work properly, because the you know the investigators never investigated. Every Christian must be an investigator, every child of God must learn to investigate gate before you pass judgment don't pass judgment if you have not investigated that's why they spend money they spend money time and, and, and you know and skill to investigate because you don't want to pass judgment amen <laughs> without knowing without without being sure without being ascertained that indeed this person committed the crime and that has been something that has weakened the church it has weakened us it has stopped us from advancing. I mean, many men of God all right, have died prematurely. Their ministry have, have, been, have been crippled prematurely because of accusation. All right? Yes, there are all kinds of things out, happening out there. Yes, we, we've seen men of God doing all crazy things. We've seen the church. Do, yeah, but I'm telling you, half of the people out there that, have been, you know, that are facing issues is because they've been accused. All right? One of the laws in South Africa is you cannot, you cannot define and determine somebody guilty until they've been proven to really be guilty. But we know that law doesn't really hold because it's, it's a bit weak. I want to read a scripture. Uh, um, 
Second Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to read, in fact, we're looking at verse 3. But maybe I should start from verse 1. I hope you will put up with me a little of my foolishness. This is Paul speaking. But you are already doing that. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promised you to one husband and to Christ so that I may present you as a pure virgin to him. What a heart. What a heart of Paul. Paul said, guys, don't don't be angry with me because I'm bringing this issue up again. I promised you to to one husband and that is to Christ. This is the heart of a true leader of a true of a true father of a true intercessor of a true elder of a true vessel of god of a true apostle of a true you know instrument in the hand of god he says please bear with me if 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 what you think i'm saying is foolish just bear with my foolishness and i know you're already doing that because paul is saying things that they're like come on paul say something else we've heard this before you know how it is where where you think oh i've heard this message before don't you have something else to say (laughs) Don't you have something else to say? But I tell you, there is power in repetition. Paul said, no, I, 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 I need to bring this thing up again. Because one of the greatest challenges that Paul you know, faced in, in, in his ministry years was in Corinth. If you look at the church in Corinth, I mean, this is a church that has it all. I mean, it's, it's a mixture. It's a mixture of everything. Extreme. You know, you see those who say, well, we're for Paul, then we're for Apollos, we're for this, we're for that. I mean, a church divided. Everything is just termaka, like they will say here in South Africa. Everything is upside down. They seem not to have an understanding. Yet in the same place, here's the gift manifesting here and there. So Paul had to bring some order into this house. Say, guys, come. You, you guys are running with gift, but there are things you need to solve. There are issues you need to deal with. There are things that will cripple you from advancing because there is division in your midst. And what is bringing this, this division amen, is a spirit, is an accusing spirit. All kinds of spirit we find in this house. The spirit of loss, there's perversion. There's, I mean, the, the church of Corinth is a typical reflection of the church we, we live in today. Everything is there. So here's Paul saying, look, bear with my foolishness. At least these people, they have somebody to speak into their life, which is something that I admire about them. All right, At least they have somebody to speak into their life. Our problem today is that we don't even want, you know, Paul to speak to us. If there's a Paul, we want to kill that Paul. No, we don't want Paul to speak to us. But at least they, yeah, I mean, they can listen to Paul. He says, I am jealous. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy something called a godly jealousy people don't like that when you are zealous about the things of god and you take a stand amen for god and you stand for the things of god and you are you are passionate about it people look at you and it's like what, what why are you why why, why are you doing that why do, I, I mean are you god why would why would why should you tell us that why do you have to tell us that don't tell us that don't speak like that Come, can't you just be normal like every other person and i tell them i'm sorry i'm not normal my normalcy died some 30, you know, three decades ago. I'm not normal. I'm not a normal person. I'm an abnormal person because I live in an abnormal world. And for me to be able to deal with that which is before me, I have to live outside the box. I cannot be part of what everybody is doing. I cannot be dancing to the beatings, amen, and, and want to change them. It's not going to work. If you're going to stand in this new day, if you're going to stand for God, I tell you, you're going to stand alone because people will not like that which you're declaring. Yesterday, I proclaimed it. I am a reformer, and I mean it. I am a reformer. A reformer is not one that conforms. A reformer is not a con- Conformist. I do not conform, amen, to the system out there. I do not conform to what people call Christianity and religion out there. No, I do not conform to that. I stand, I may be standing alone, but I know I'm not standing alone. But I'm standing, amen, with that which I see in the word of God. And if we're going to move on, if we're going to, uh, you know, prepare for that which the Lord, amen, will have us coming into, then we've got to highlight all this spirit. We've got to highlight all these devils. We've got to expose these powers of darkness. We've got to take our stand. The Bible says, I haven't done all to stand. Stand therefore with your loins guarded with truth. With truth. Our loins must be guarded with truth in this new day. Not with somebody's you know, opinion or ideology. No. Not with some traditions and religion. We've got to be guarded with truth. Because I tell you, there is an enemy coming. I told you the last time, some, you know, was it last week? I said, God once again 
is shaking everything within our life. Amen. It's troubling the water. It's, it's tearing things up. Situations are happening here and there. And you will think it's the devil. No, it's God. God is trying to expose all kinds of things around you. Things that are, that are there. Kumatos. They are there. They are evil, but they are kumatos. God is tearing. God is awakening all kinds of things so that you can wake up and see and know what to deal with. Amen. And get yourself prepared. So you don't think, well, I'm standing well. There are enemy all around you waiting to chop off your head. It's it's time, amen, to get up and get moving. Come on, let's, let's, let's read on. It says, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promise you to one husband. In other words, my duty, my duty is not for you. It's not to inherit you. I don't want to marry you. <laughs> you know, we've got men of God want to marry the people. Paul said, I don't want to marry you. My duty is to prepare you for one, for one, for one husband. I'm preparing you. You know, I'm a forerunner. You know, like John, I'm a foreigner. I'm preparing you. I'm, I'm preparing you for one husband. Hallelujah. What a word. And that is to Christ. It says, so that you may be presented a, a pure virgin to him. He said, but I'm afraid. Why would you be afraid, Paul? You're doing your job. You're doing what you need to do. Paul said, but I'm afraid. That is the heart of a true, a, a, you know, a true leader. A true father, a true leader will expose, amen, you know, the good side of the people, but will also, you know, Reveal the, the side that it may, may, may not be, you know, uh, 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 prepared, may not be ready. Get, we've got to deal with this area. I'm afraid. This is what Paul said. He said, I'm afraid. What could be causing Paul to be afraid? What could be causing this great man of God to be? He said, but I am afraid. Just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning. Now he's talking to the church here. So he said, I'm seeing something that just as Eve was deceived back then. By the cunning, by the craftiness, by the conniving of the serpent. Your mind may somehow be led astray from, from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. He says, just as if was deceived, I'm afraid that you also, in the contest, in the state of your mind, you may be led astray. All right? From your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. From your sincere and pure devotion. I'm dealing with the spirit of accusation. When there is no sincere and pure devotion to Christ. When our heart is no longer pure. When our mind amen, has shifted away from a devotion to Christ. My God, that is a nice breeding ground for all kinds of spirit. Including the spirit of accusation. When our heart, when our mind has become, amen, a point, a place where all kinds of things can just flow in. You see, there, there, there are no gates, there are no walls in our life. You see, we've got to build walls and gates in our life. There are things that we've got to be able to say, sorry, you can't come in. You cannot enter. Sorry, you are not allowed in here. Accusation, you are not allowed in here. If there is, the Bible says, if, 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 there's an, if, there's an, if there's an issue, if there's a matter, it says, you, sh, it says you should call three people and deal with it, deal with the issue. You see, one of the things that we're afraid of in the church, and I'm saying this because God is bringing back the spirit of prayer, the spirit of intercession, is that we don't don't like to communicate face to face. We rather call somebody else and go, you know, talk, you know, bad mouth. And hey, hey, have you heard? No, no. Call the person. Call the person. People know me for that, and that's why people don't like to tell me things. Because before you tell me, I'm gonna tell you. Wait a minute. Can we? Can we call this person that you're talking about? All right. If there's something that is wrong, and I know a lot of men of God have, have decided to cut me off because I would just not be a man. There, you know, their 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 ears of you know of all kinds of tales. No, no, no. I, I'm not gonna allow that. In fact, if you tell me, you'll be surprised that I'm gonna call the next person. I'm gonna say. Hey, I I heard that you said this. I heard that you, and people don't like that. They, some, 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 some will accuse me. You're too confrontational. I'm not confrontational. I'm just applying the word of God. Why? Because I'm trying to stop a spirit. If you don't cut the head of that serpent, that thing will continue to grow. An accusing spirit would destroy. No matter how we big. Be, you know, build big. No matter how we grow, no matter what we have done, if we allow the spirit to remain and abide in our community, to abide even in our home, 
it would destroy. I mean, I when when my, when my child is my my daughter's, you know, try to accuse, you know, the brother. I, I said no, that's wrong, Jemima. You, you you cannot do that. No, Samuel, you cannot do that. I I, and I and I bring both of them. I say, okay, what's going on here? All right, reconcile. Say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If we can do that in the home, we should be able to do it in the church. You see, some time ago, the Lord asked me, what values are you imparting into your child, into your children? And immediately I, I said to the Lord, these are the things I'm doing. And I believe that's a parable. What values are we imparting into the church? No, our message should be imparting values, not getting people excited. All right, we, we should be imparting values, values, values of honor. I mean, if we begin to impart the value of respect and honor amen, for each other, not just for the man of God alone, because that's what we, we when we talk about you know, value. Oh, we've got to honor the man of God. We've got to honor the bishop. We've got to honor. And we need to do that. We need to honor those who are, who God has placed over our head. But guess what? That honor must start with each other. If there is no honor in the house as a, as a value, amen, as a culture, whatever honor we're giving to the man is just a face value. It's not real. Because if the man is not there, we will talk behind him. You know, you know how we do it. After service, we go to sister sally's house and we talk about everybody we talk about the pastor we talk about the bishop we talk about the wife we talk about the dressing of them of the mama of the house and you know how you know how you know how they do it that's why i hate i hate religion i hate it i hate it with a passion i've been there so don't say oh this guy is just saying it because no no i've been there i've been there i've been there I've been there. So we've got to be able to rise up in this new day, in this day of the Lord. We've got to be able to take our place and and understand what the Spirit of the Lord is emphasizing. Paul said, I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning. You see, a cunning, when something is cunning, conniving, all right, you you don't see it. It it sneaks on you. It comes from behind. It comes looking good. The Bible says that, that, you know, even Satan comes, amen, and presents himself to us, amen, presents his apostles as angels of light, as angels of light. Oh my good God. If you don't understand the true light, you will fall for the fake light. There's a fake light. There's a false light out there. It's, It's looking, wow, bright. Oh, this is nice light. That's not Christ. So, it, because if you go into the wall system, if you go into people who are into all this, you know, um, Eastern religion, they're always talking about light. If you, if you, if you know about Hinduism and Buddhism and all this Asia, I mean, they're always talking about light. This light, that light, that light. But guess what? It is not the real light. If you begin to scrutinize the values, the spirit behind those lights is another light. Is the devil. So we've got to be able to understand. The Bible says, just as Eve was deceived by the serpent, cunning, cunning. It, it, Come on, I don't know how to put this better to us, how to communicate this better to us. But we've got to be able to have grace, the grace of God in our hearts, in our life, that we that we're able to see beyond, beyond what is being said, beyond all right, the physical, beyond that which is on the face, on the surface. We've got to be able to track, we've got to be able to, you know, unpack, reveal, you know, see into, you know, every temptation. That Satan true to Jesus, I mean, where things that you would think, I mean, what's wrong with that? Turns the stone to bread. I mean, Jesus could be proven that he's the son of God. But why would Jesus need to prove to Satan? Why would Jesus need? You see, you need to prove a point if you, if you are insecure of where you are. That's where people prove a point. You only need to prove a point if you are not sure. If you know who you are, you don't prove nothing. If you know who you are, you just walk and say, I heard. I, I, I sent you a message. And you never replied me. What happened? Uh, Did did you get my message? You understand? You you, you confront people in humility. Yes, there is is, is confrontation. Their humility. There's a confrontation of pride, but there's a confrontation of humility. I heard this thing. I, I want to be sure. Is it true? You understand? Don't 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 let what people say to you about somebody else, amen, becomes your final habit of decision. That will be error. You will be you will be living in error. And such I mean, in such kind of a person, amen, will never be able to pray effectively. Because if you pray, your prayer will not be answered before God. Because already you've judged somebody. All right, that the person doesn't even know what you're what you're talking about. You've already judged the person. 
I mean, I mean, that is something we've got to be able to deal with. If there is an issue that a Christian cannot deal with, cannot address, cannot talk about, then you have failed the values of Christianity. You have failed. You are not fit to be a Christian. Because there are, there, there are values that define Christianity. Islam has got their own values. Bo, you know, people who are into Buddhism, people who are into Hare Krishna, people who are into, con, you know, Confuci- Confucianism. They've got this religion, they've got their values. One of the, one of the core pillars of Christianity is that when somebody offends you, go to the person. It doesn't say stay behind and start speaking and start taking the word from A, B, C, D. It's unchristian. It's it's antichrist. We're talking about we want to finish strong in our day. We want to come into the confluence of that which God has designed. Listen to this. I keep saying it. There is a prophetic dimension for this nation. There is something God wants this nation to come into. But if we have the same bunch of Christians representing the things of God, we will never come into the finish. We will not even start to talk about finishing. We need to realize, we need to understand that this is the day God wants bold Christian. You can be bold and still be humble. You can be bold, amen, and still be soft. Is that not what Jesus revealed to us? He is both the lion and the lamb. He is the lion and the lamb. So any time you see Jesus appear as a lion, you're going to see the heart of a lamb. And every time Jesus appeared to you as a lamb, you you better be careful because there is a lion that is about to roar. So don't take it for granted. Let's not take this moment, this this day for granted. God is highlighting a powerful spirit. That thing showed up in Genesis. The next time we will see that spirit is in the book of Revelation. So that thing has been tracking, has been has been journeying from, from Genesis to Revelation. And people could not track it. In this new day, we are going to track that spirit. My call is to track spirits. That's why I don't have many friends. My calling, my mission, my, my mandate is to track the spirit that I've, that I've destroyed, that I've hindered, that I've crippled, including perversion, sexual, anything, the spirit. Tell me, I have faced it all. Sexual perversion, I've faced it. All kinds of evil spirit, I've faced it. I've faced it. Tell me, just mention the spirit. God, God, place things people issues in my life to test me to prepare me for this day so i'm not a pastor i'm not not pastoring nobody i'm pastoring the nations we want to raise a voice this nation must come into a prophetic destiny the nations of the world must come into their prophetic destiny we will not we will not fold our hands and let some few funny spirit destroy what jesus died for there is a generation being, being awakened. There is a generation that needs to hear this truth. That we have to rise up. We have to bring a people into their destiny. Do you know why Moses could not enter? You know why Moses could not enter the promised land? Listen, I do not believe that it was God as, that you know God ordained it. Because I've heard that theory that God ordained it. You know, ordaining that Moses was just to bring the people out, but not to take them in. I don't know if you've heard of, you know, that, you know, you know, school of thought. But guess what? I do not believe that. I believe that God ordained Moses to bring the people out of bondage and to bring them in into the promised land. But something began to happen. I mean, if, and if you check the scripture, you begin to see. You, I mean, you can trace what happened to Moses. Why he could not enter the promised land. Because first of all, there was a spirit of dis- disobedience. God told him, this is what I want you to do. You speak to the rock. You don't strike the rock. You see, when God asks you to do something, you don't second guess. The Bible says Moses was the meekest man. Yes, he was the meekest man. But guess what? Pride and anger hindered him and subordination from, ent- from entering. Because, the, you see, when ministry gets into your head, you throw God away. <laughs> you, you need to catch that. When you place ministry before God, you will miss the mark. No matter how popular, no matter how powerful, no matter how influential you are becoming in the things of God. Particularly, I said this yesterday, the reason why God shut down 
the ministry of intercession in the past is because all right, the intercessors begin to develop pride. They begin to get heady. They begin to feel... We are, the, we, we, are, we are the next in town. Nobody can do it without us. Without us, nothing can work. And God said, okay, pride has taken over this thing. You see, the things of God are in, in movement. Every time there's a corruption, there's a perversion, God leaves it. He jumps to the next thing. And now I believe God is awakening once again the spirit of intercession. And we cannot allow, amen, the things that shut down the past move to hinder us in this new day. No, we cannot allow that. Where people began to use the ministry of intercession, all right, to judge men of God, to stop them, you know, to control and to manipulate people. You're going to be, every time you're saying God told us, they, they began to operate in false order of the prophetic. I'm talking, you see, I'm not, when, when I'm talking about this thing, brethren, you've got to understand, I've been there. People who know me will tell you, in our church in Nigeria, we raised one of the most formidable intercessory spirit, intercessory community. We became a pattern, we became a model. Not only are we just praying, God gave us new songs that was changing the atmosphere. We were doing things like this. And the time came, God said, shut it down. You see, most time people get angry with you. Brother Derek, you're watching me. Most time people get angry with you. When God says, shut something down, and because people do not understand what you're saying, immediately people start judging you. They think, okay, maybe this man is not even interested in what we want to do. No, you don't understand the ways of God. When God says, shut something down, you shut it down because that itself is a test. And we don't understand the ways of God. So we miss God because we want to judge God. We want to judge the things of God by the, knowledge, by the fruit of the knowledge of tree. By the, by the, by the fruit of, you know, the fruit of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. No, we're not tracking that tree. We are tracking the tree of life. When God says jump, you jump. When God says fly, you fly. When God says bow, you bow. When God says be quiet. I mean, seven years of my life, God says shut up, say nothing. Zip your mouth. I zip my mouth for seven good years. You never, you never hear Isaiah. You never see Isaiah. And the day came, God says, now open your mouth. Seven years in this nation, God says, close your mouth, say nothing. It's, it's, it's funny when we begin to try to judge the things of the spirit, amen, by the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It brings destruction to the camp. This is the day where we've got to follow. We've got to track the heart of God. We've got to track. If there is no trust in what we're doing, accusation will come in. If there is no trust in what God has called us to do, if there is a leader you are following and you do not trust the person, please stop following that leader because you're going to be a worm. You're going to bring destruction. You're going you're gonna to be an instrument of destruction to that which God wants to do. When the children of Israel stopped trusting Moses, there was chaos in the camp you got to bring order god is bringing order back to his church not just to one church back to the church god is bringing order and for order to come back to the church we've got to be able to track every spirit that brought disorderliness that brought division that brought all kinds of wickedness all i mean we've got to bring order back listen to this angels are not going to come and do this job no 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 the the job is not for the the, the job of angels amen is to bring the message and give it to the messenger amen yes the word must be perfected in the messenger they send them i'm a messenger I'm, I'm, a, I'm a called one sent to bring a word of the Lord to this land, to this nation, to my generation. Not just to South Africa, to America, to Canada. I mean, people are tracking us. They are asking, we want you to connect with you. Let's, listen, brethren, we've got to understand the day that we live in. If we allow amen, a foreign spirit to enter into our company, into our community, into our homes, because we are immature, accusation will cripple you from advancing into the next dimension. You will remain dwarf. You will remain limited in where you are. And the enemy likes it so. Just stay there. And he will be giving you little, little blessing there and there. And you will think, wow, after all, after all, Isaiah is no longer in our life, we're getting blessed. You've missed it. You're blind. You, you're blind. You've missed it. Isaiah is a man God sent to challenge you, to bring you out, bring you out of where you are into the place where you need to be. But it's not going to happen by, you know, by soft glove. No, sometimes Isaiah will have to open, remove the glove and give you, a, you know, a real hitting, a hitting that will be painful. And you say, yes, I will align with the will of God. God, listen, one of the ministers of the prophetic, 
One of these days, I'm going to deal with, you know, how to track the ministry and the spirit of a prophet. How to track it. Because a lot of people do not understand that. And that's why people who work with a prophet, they're always having issues. If you have, if you, if you, if you have people that are very prophetic in your life, it, it will take the grace of God for you to understand them. And you have to have a lot of patience. And you have to, you know, <laughs> it's like God says, Abraham, walk before me and be perfect. And I'm watching Abraham trying to catch up with God. You're trying to catch up with God. You see, and you're trying to catch up with him and being perfect and being straight. That's how the prophetic is. You're working with somebody who is almost like, you know, light years ahead of you. And the guy is, come up, catch up, catch up, catch up. And, and you're like, I'm so tired. There is something that is the place of the training. They're training your spirit. And if you don't understand that, guess what? Accusation, you know, divisions, hatred, anger, depression, all kinds of things. Let me tell you this. If we don't understand how to track the things of God, an evil spirit will present themselves and we will assume it is God. And this is what is happening today in the church. An evil spirit will, will patch in. The Bible says a, a spirit of life from God was sent. <laughs> In other words, God saw that you, you want to believe in a lie, I will give you lie. You want to believe in delusion, I will give you delusion. You want to believe in perversion, have perversion, have it in a fool. God will give you the desires of your heart. It's not what you pray for. God will give you the desires of your heart. It's not what you're praying for. I say God will give you the desire. God doesn't just listen to what you say. He listens to what, you're, what, what is in your heart and that is what he will reward. That is what he will give. Come on. You see what I'm talking about? I'm saying God will give you the desires of your heart. You see, if your heart desire is carnal, is fleshy, that's what you're going to get. He said, he who is lying, let him continue to lie. Continue to lie. So we've got to be able to understand the days that we're living. That way the Spirit of God is speaking to us so that we do not, what, we do not make the same mistake. That is why we have the Word of God. It's a reference. You want to live life successfully. You want to overcome. You want to be victorious. You want to, you want to reach that place where indeed you can look back and say, Thank you God. Let the Word of God be your mirror. Let the Word of God. Don't read the Word and choose what you want to see. Let the word read you. Don't just read the word. Let the word read you. When the word read your emotion, let the word read your attitude. Let the word read, amen, your belief system. Let the word read your values. Come on. Let the word read, amen, your, 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 you know, your sense of belief. Let the word read how you give. Let the word read every aspect. Let the word read how you treat others. Let the word read, amen, read how, how you, how you express. Press the will of God. Let the word of God read that. You don't just read the word. We've been reading the word here. Yeah? But now we want the word to read us. Come on. I know the word of God is coming with life this morning. We've been reading the word of God. It's time for the word to read us. You see. When the word, when the word of God start reading us. Ah then we are growing. You see. You see. There is a time where we need to study. We need to study. But then there's a time we need to now take the exam. When you start taking the exam of, of, of truth, amen. When you start taking the exam, amen, of the values of the kingdom. Then you, are, then you are growing up. Then you are coming into maturity. Maturity is not going to happen by chance. It's going to happen because you have sat for the exam. And you, now you are ready. Now you're ready. Now you're ready to take the exam. Now you're ready. You've studied for it. Now you're ready to take the exam. And the exam will be all kinds of things. Listen, the exam will be, people will be saying, people will, people will be accusing you. How you also respond to the accusation matters. It's not just, because see, if, 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 a, if a spirit of accusation, amen, is at work. But if you respond, amen, with wisdom, with the knowledge of God's word, with the will of God, amen, guess what? You win. When an issue transpires, and you know you are right, and you believe you are right. And the Lord wakes you up and says, you go, you go ask for, you know, forgiveness. But you're the one that is right. And God said, go ask for forgiveness. And you go and you do what God asks you to do. Guess what? You grow. You, you mature the more. <laughs> That's what people do not understand. But pride will say, no, I'm not going to go. After I'm not the one that is at fault. Uh -uh. You want to kill a spirit. You want to destroy that spirit. You, you want to unstrung that spirit. Rise up. And go. The more you do that, the more God increases you. The more Christ grows in you. The more the will of God increases. The more the authority of heaven sits in you. 
The authority of God is invested in the place where humility is visible. Where there is no visibility in humility, pride will continue to hinder us from doing what we need to do. And pride, the Bible says, goes before a fall. What are we doing? We're tracking the spirit. We're tracking the spirit called accusation. It's a powerful, deadly spirit. I'm going to read that scripture again. Revelation. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Revelation chapter 12. I'm going to read Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angel fought back. <laughs> Can you see that? The dragon and his angel, they fought back. They fought Michael back. But there was, the but Bible says, but they were not strong enough. Hallelujah. But they were not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. Maraba as they are lost in, As they have lost their place in heaven, they are losing their place on earth. They are losing their place in your home. They are losing their place in your community, in your family. They are losing their place in your ministry in the name of Jesus. As there was no place for them in the heavens. Listen, they will have no place in your earth, in your life, in your home. Verse 9 says, The great dragon was hauled down. That ancient serpent called the devil or Satan. I mean, yes, the Lord, the scripture giving us a full definition of this spirit, this Lucifer satanic spirit. Who led the whole world astray? Oh my good God. Who led the, this is how powerful this spirit is. Can lead the whole world astray. Who led the, read the scripture. I'm reading Romans, excuse me, Revelation 12. Verse 9. He led the whole world astray. You know, yesterday I was asking myself, can you be, can one live in a community and almost everybody there is blind? Yes. Because you see, blindness is a spirit. Can a whole generation be blind to a particular word of God? Yes. Can a generation die without entering that with God as ordained for, for them? Yes. If there is nobody that can rise up above what has benchmarked everything. You remember the scripture I used to like to use when I talk about things like this. Zechariah chapter 1. There were four horns. The Bible says, and this horn prevent, prevent people from the land from raising their head. He said, these horns, these four horns, prevent, and prevent the whole nation from raising. Nobody, Bible says nobody could. In fact, let me read the scripture while I'm on this. Let me read that scripture. I'm going to come back to, to Revelation. I'm going to come back to Revelation. Let me quickly track because this is important. So that you understand what we're dealing with, Zechariah. I'm looking for Zechariah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Zephaniah, Zechariah. All right, yes, I found you. I wonder why they call these guys minor prophets. These are dangerous prophets. I wonder why they call them minor. They are not minor. They are the major. They are <laughs> These guys are dangerous. Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. No, no. Let's look at verse 18. You see, we're dealing with something. Can, can an entire realm, an entire region be captured by a particular spirit? That everybody there just does the same thing. It's like a zombie. Everybody just go. <laughs> everybody just go the same way. They say, go this way. Have you watched that movie back then? Zombie. Zombie the flesh eaters. You know? If, you, if, if that thing bites you, you to also become a zombie. Aye, what a revelation. Don't let the spirit of accusation bite you because indeed you also will become an accuser. That reminds me. There's this book of uh, Rick Joyner. What's that book now? Final Quest. Is it Final Quest? Yes, Final Quest. That is a book I want to recommend for the body of Christ. I wonder where we can get that book again. Please, anybody knows where we can get Final Quest or we can download it. Please just, you know, drop me a message or, you know, put something on my uh, um, inbox or maybe just tell me on, you know, my timeline. We want, I want people to read Final Quest again by Rick Joyner. 
that is a masterpiece that helps us to deal with the spirit of the age. Final quest by Rick Joyner. Look for it. Look for it. If you have it, read it again. I used to have it. I know back then Joanna's book, but you know, you know, back then you borrow people book. The book never comes back. That is something. I mean, I used to have this book, uh, um, the Watch Many in the Spiritual Man in Joanna's bug. All right, disappear. Oh, I'm gonna read it. Oh, borrow me. Oh, you borrow people, but it never comes back. I don't know why people do that. I just don't understand why people. I mean, that's stealing. All right, you steal somebody's book. I mean, I'm giving you a book to read, but you never bring it back. All right. So we want to read. We want to read Final Quest. You please look for that book. It's important. Let me go back to Zechariah. Zechariah one verse eighteen. It says, "Then I look up, and there. Then I look up, and there before me were four horns. Every time you see the word horns in the scripture, they talk about powers, authority. All right, horns represent power, authority, or government." All right, they could either be good or evil. All right, he said, Then I saw four horns. So, we're talking about four representing the four corners of the earth or the four corners of the world or a city, a nation. All right, so it means it's complete, the authority is complete. That's what it means. Four horns, complete authority. I asked, This is Zachariah asking now. This is something transpired in the spirit realm. Oh, may God open our eyes of understanding. These are, we want to track things by, by, by the grace of God in this new day. We don't want to live our life, amen, by chance. We don't want to live our life in, by, you know, by trend. No, we want to live our life, amen, governed, seated, amen, in the spirit realm, looking down at events in the natural realm, all right? So, so our life is not determined by natural events and season. We're not, we're not a bunch of, you know, accident happening. No, we, we live our life in a dimension where the enemy amen, cannot touch us. It says, then I look up, there were four horns. Then I asked the angels, I asked the angel who was speaking with me, what are these? That should be the natural thing. You're looking at horns. You see, that's why, you know, our, our prophetic school is going to start very soon again. And I'm going to be dealing with things like symbols and dreams. Because I realize a lot of people have been fooled. A lot of people have been, you know, deceived and have been, excuse me, carried into all kinds of, you know, uh, new age spirits in terms of even dream interpretation. Yes, the prophet of the Lord asking a question. What are this? You've got to understand. When you see a horn, what does it mean? The angel is Excuse me, Zechariah is asking, what are this? He answered me, these are the horns that scatter. So you now begin to understand the purpose of those horns. These are the horns that scatter Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Powerful, powerful, you know, a principle here. These are the horns that scatter, they scatter. The, the principle of the kingdom is gathering. Every time you hear the word scatter in the scripture, it means judgment. I said, he said, these are the horns that scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me. You have to be shown. You have to open your eyes. That's why you, you cannot allow, you know, some negative spirit. Because if there's a negative spirit in your life and they're trying to show you something, that thing gets corrupt. It gets perverted. You don't really get to see and pick the real image. You don't get the real message that God is trying to say to you. When there is a kind of foreign negative spirit in you, when you're seeing, seeing things and when you're hearing things, I can, I, can sh- I can assure you that there will be an interference. There will be a pollution that's why people see things but they're not seen accurately because there are all kinds of issues that are there that that is that is mixing or are misinterpreting and confusing them therefore their their utterance and their proclamation and their and their interpretation of what god has shown them amen or what god is trying to show them amen it's not accurate Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. It takes four craftsmen to deal with the four horns. I mean, I would have assumed just one craftsman is, an, is enough. After all, we're dealing with the things of the spirit. I mean, we're spiritual. Did you see, did you see the co- concept of equalization? There are four horns. Four horns require four craftsmen. But the point is, 
because I don't want to continue to preach on this. This is not the point I'm making. But I'm just trying to explain that we can be influence an entire realm, a home. That's why we've got, you know, have you heard of, you know, uh, uh, um, what do you call that spirit now that, you know, influence or impacts a, a family and is transferred from generation to generation? Yes. Generational spirit. A family can be suffering from a generational spirit. Yeah, because spirit can be transferred from one generation to another, from one, you know, home to another, from one season to another. Yes, yes, it, it, it is still very much alive, even though we don't hear people talk about it today. We can be suffering from a generational spirit. You see, these are some of the things the Lord opened my eyes to when I was growing. Why is it that in my family, everybody goes this way, everybody does this, and, and when I give my life to Jesus, I began to realize, wait a minute, Isaiah, you're also going. In fact, back then, my name was not Isaiah. I changed my name. I changed not just my name. I changed my also surname. Before my father died, I said, Daddy, I don't want to continue to bear this surname. And my father said, it's fine. Because, you see, my father trusts me. When I gave my life to Jesus, he trusts me. He was, he was bedridden. He said, okay. What do you want to bear? I said, I want to bear Akintola. Akintola is my grandfather's name, but the name everybody's bearing in the family is a compound name, which is Omikule. The word Omikule all right, is, an, is, is like you say, uh, um, the water has been dedicated. But, but the, 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 the meaning is that all right, my family were actually dedicated to the goddess of the water. That, I mean, so everybody does this ungodly thing. You can just see the spirit manifesting. The, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing something very powerful with you. And I said, if I'm going to continue, one, I don't want my children, all right, to carry the same spirit. I want this thing to stop with me. So, daddy, can I change my son name? He looked at me. I mean, I could still remember. He was lying on the bed. He looked at me. He said, yes, you can. So he said, which, so which surname do you want to bear? I mean, this is strange. Nobody does that from my kind of tradition. I said, I want to bear your father's name. He shook his head. He said, that's good. What's my father's, what's my, my grandfather's name? Akintola. So that means strength. Strength is, is, is more than wealth. Strength is more than wealth. That's the, that's the meaning of you know, my, my grandfather's name. Strength is more than wealth. And I immediately picked that. The strength of the Lord is all I need. They said, that's fine. And I went, made it legal. Went to the newspaper. Went to the court. Went to the court. That day, I cut that thing. You see, I've been praying all my life. But the Lord gave me this wisdom. What's your name? I mean, they asked Jacob, what's your name? He said, I'm a supplanter. <laughs> I'm a so So everywhere you go with the name. Guess what? You'll be supplanting people. You'll be taking things that, that doesn't belong to you. You'll be into all kinds of funny things. You, 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 you'll be so susceptible to the lies of the... Somebody say, what is in the name? You better believe that your name matters the, because your name, amen, is, is, is an invocation. Amen, is a declaration of who you are. When they call that name, they invoke a spirit behind the name. I so say, I'm going to change my name. He said, go ahead. So I even got even more angry in the spirit. I said, even the name that was given to me, which is a good name. I mean, I've been baller. He was born into wealth. That was me. I mean, I said, fine, but I want to have a biblical name. I'm taking the word Isaiah Phillips Akitola. I was still a teenager. I didn't even know what I was doing, but I had an understanding of the, of the word of God. Guess what? Everybody in the family was like, so who do you think you are? It's my destiny. And the destiny of those that are coming after me. And I said, Father, you know, if this is of you, you will give me a son that will carry this name, Akintola, to the next generation. And he did. Can you stand out? Or you want to follow the crowd? Can you dare to be different for Christ? You see, Christ was never a conformist. Not even his own family. You see, when it comes to the things of the spirit, there is no compromise. You know what I'm talking about? When it comes to the things of the spirit, you do not compromise for all kinds of funny spirit to be able to patch in, to, to find their way into your life. No, you don't do that. 
That doesn't mean you're still not going to get challenged when you do this thing, when you make this decision. Oh my good God, tell me the battles I've faced. But every day I make up my mind, I'm standing my ground. I'd rather die fighting as a man of honor than to, than to die early hiding. No, I'd rather die fighting as a, as a man of honor. Die for the honor and the fame of Christ. Many people thought when I come to this nation, I will not be able to succeed. But God had a different pattern. Because it's his success, as we define success, it's, it's going to come and start a big church. And, you know, and people are going to be. God had a different pattern. You take the airwave, you take the land. We're taking the airwave by storm. And that's why I'm pleased. I'm encouraging you. Share the link. If you can, share this link. Let, the, let this truth spread. Let the people know that the people out there all right, that seem to be popular, are, are in fact, are not the ones popular, that there is a word that God is giving, that bread once again has been found in the land, that God has returned to the land. Hallelujah. That truth is being restored to the land. Let's spread the word. Let's spread this truth. Please share this word. Spread the word. Share the links with your friends. Let them know that God is still speaking. That this is the day where heaven is opening up. Heaven is speaking to us anew, afresh. We're dealing with every power. We're dealing with every force. We're dealing with every negative spirit. We're dealing with the pride of life. We're dealing with the deceitfulness of riches. We're dealing with the mammonic spirit. We're coming into a day, hallelujah, where we will bring a people into the newness of that which God is demanding and requiring for our day. We're not bowing down. We're not quieting. We're not. You see, that's why we speak outside the system because we've been in the system. He showed me four carpenters, four craftsmen, and I asked, "What are these?" He answered, "These are the horns that scattered Judah, so that no one could raise his head, so that no one could raise his head." That's what I told you about. That I mean, a, a, a spirit can rule, can be can can be controlling, and you know, a society. That nobody raised their head above. Everybody is doing the same thing. You see, you look at the church, everybody is singing the same song. Everybody is preaching the same message. Everybody is dressing, you know, this, these days everybody just wants to dress like the Catholic and dress like the Anglican. And they say that we are Pentecostal. They, they say we are, we, we know we are in the apostolic. I say, sorry, you, God doesn't know you. Because even your dress code is a message of where you are, who you are, what you represent. You can't be putting a big cross and be wearing some robe and be carrying some, you know, stuff. And you think you're representing the... Heaven doesn't recognize you. Because that is idolatry. You're, you're printing an image of a different God, of a different community to the mind of the people. Yes. He answered, these are the horns that scattered Judah so that no one could raise his head. But the craftsmen... They have come to terrify them and throw them down. Throw down these horns of the nation who lifted their horns against the land of Judah to scatter the people. In the name of Jesus, we refuse that. We refuse the horns that wants to scatter, that wants to destroy, that wants to nullify the intentions of God for our nation, for our land, for the nation of South Africa and for the nation of the world, for the continent of Africa. We refuse these horns and therefore we are raising, amen, the spirit of the four craftsmen. We are the craftsmen. We are coming against the spirit of accusation. We are rising against the spirit, amen, of perversion and wickedness. We are rising against the spirit of destruction. We are declaring, amen, that we are the voice of one crying in the wilderness. We are preparing the way of the Lord. We are making the path of God straight. This is our day. This is our day. This is our time. We are not giving in. I'm going to go back to... I'm going to go back to um, Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. We're dealing with a spirit. It's called the spirit of accusation. And this spirit, amen, is so powerful that it can hinder, it can frustrate, it can limit, it can cripple. Bible says, don't allow the seed of this spirit into your heart. 
This spirit appeared in Genesis. We're tracking the spirit again in Revelation, in the book of Revelation. I said yesterday that whatever you read in the book of Revelation, amen, defines how you must prepare yourself, how you must get yourself aligned, amen, to, to, to a nature of life, to a value system. When you begin to read the book of Revelation, it tells you, amen, that this is how you must engage and this is how, amen, you must understand how to build your life, how to build your home, how to build your city, your nation, your community. This, these are things you must track, amen. Whatever spirit you see appear in the book of Revelation, my God, you've got to find somebody that can train you and prepare you to address, to deal with, to challenge the spirit or else they will finish you. You see, it's not about starting. It's about finishing. <laughs> Genesis is starting. Revelation is finishing. So you need revelation to understand. That's why it's called the book of revelation. Don't try to, you know, theorize this thing. Look at it from a theoretical person. No, no. You've got to look at it amen, from the concept of the spirit. We are living in the day of the fulfillment of the prophecy in this book. I say we are living in the day of the, of the, of the fulfillment of the prophecy. These are days of the nearness of Christ, the kingdom. The more the kingdom of God amen, becomes visible in us, through us, in our community, the more we've got to change our wine skin, change our dress code, change our principle, our philosophy, our thought pattern, amen, to align to a man, John, that can also see and address the activity in the book of Revelation. Listen to this. If you're waiting for some Amagedon, <laughs> that, yes, that may happen, but guess what? Amagedon is already taking place in the hearts of men. War is already taking place today. If you, if you don't believe me, go see what is happening in Nigeria, in Plateau State. We're already living in the days of genocide. People are already dying for their, for, you know, for their fate in this new day that we're living. You're living your, your life as if you're completely detached from the realities of the day. These are days of persecution. The church is being persecuted. You're still playing church. Still playing, you know. Come on. They're playing flute, but you don't want to dance. You can't pick the, the sense. You can't sense the spirit of the, of, of the age. I say we're, we are in a day of persecution. We're in a day of persecution. You talk about the persecuted church. We're already in that day. Don't let nobody fool you. When do you think that day is going to happen? When do you think that day is going to come? It's already here. A whole, a whole community in, 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 in Kaduna, in, in, in Nigeria, wiped away because they are Christians. Not because they did any other thing. They, because they are Christian, they are wiped away. This is a place I came from. So don't tell me. See, if you don't know what is happening, you don't understand the passion of those who are standing to proclaim. We've got to wake up. We've got to see what is going on. Let, 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 let's not allow the enemy to lie to us and deceive us as if, you know, people are, day, are daydreaming. People are sleepwalking. Come on, wake up. Smell the coffee. This is a new day. We are in a day of war. If, if you are still, you know, asleep, you know, you're still drowsy, you're still, you know. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to survive it. You've got to wake up. You've got to wake up. You've got to realize the days that we live in. The word of God is coming to pass. Scriptures are being fulfilled. This is that that has been written. If Peter could trace joy in his day, you can trace revelation in your day. Oh, halabashaya. I just feel a fury in my spirit. The passivity of the church. Playing church and playing games. Ah, come on. I was sharing with my wife some time back. You know, all this Muslim nation, they, you know, Syria, Iraq, all those areas, those were areas that the gospel, you know, had reached. Back in the days, all those places were reached. Turkey, all those places were reached by the gospel. Those are places that, I mean, the light of God was blazing there. Do you know how the church 
miss, lose, lose those grounds because the church was playing tradition. The church was busy fighting each other. While they were busy fighting each other, guess what? Muhammad got up, declared a crusade, and began to take the territory that was once rich for the Lord. I hate it when people don't understand what is happening. We are fighting for the soul of our nation, of our community, of our city, of our family, of our children. The destiny of our children, listen to this, is at stake. I watched a documentary not too long ago. What this globalist, this ungodly, you know, new age humanist movement are trying to do. And they are, in fact, they've already begun in South Africa. How they want to reculture our children. And teach them sex education. That they, they can choose for themselves what they want to. Oh my good God. This is a real thing. I watched the documentary. We're playing church. We're still fighting each other. Oh she didn't greet me. Oh he said this about me. And you know. Oh, come, Stop the nonsense. Wake up. You're sleeping. You've been, you've been sleeping for too long. Wake up. Wake up. It's time we need to begin to have, you know, prayer conference. You know, I used to have, you know, a prayer conference back then in Johannesburg. So the battles of the kingdom. That's the title, the battles of the kingdom. Pastor Edgar is not watching. I mean, I'm not sure if Myrtle is watching. I mean, we had two, the battles of the kingdoms. What are we dealing with? We're dealing, we're exposing system behind the things people call democracy and all this. We're dealing with the powers, the spirit behind them. Those conferences were called the battles of the kingdoms. This is a kind of conference we should be having today. Not, not how to become a millionaire. Am I saying we don't need money? We need money. We need money. But, be, but, but, but if God is going to give us money, we've got to prove that indeed we are ready. Amen. Because I tell you, I know without a shadow of doubt that God is going to resource the church. The church is going to be, the last day church is going to be a wealthy church. But guess what? It's not going to be a wasteful church. We're going to be a wealthy church, but we're not going to be a wasteful church. We're going to be a church that understands the priorities of the kingdom. And therefore, we will begin to resource that which amen, needs to be resourced to advance the kingdom of God. The people that are determining hallelujah, the destiny of society are unbelievers. They are humanists. Some of them are all, are, they, they, they walk in all kinds of strange, foreign, demonic spirits. And we're just consuming. I'm tired of a consumer-driven church. I am tired of a consumer-driven church. I want to see a church that manufactures. I want to see a church that is creative. I want to see a church that understands. That's what I say. When we pray, we should have a brainwave. We should be creative. Our prayer should bring creativity. Our prayer should bring ideas that can give us capacity for innovation to fast-track the advancement of the things of the Spirit. That's how we pray. Just pray and pray. I, your prayer has no headway, has no clarity, has no direction. You can't be praying when you are soulish. You can't be praying and be praying the things of God where your mind is all in all kinds of place, being hijacked with all kinds of spirit. You're dysfunctional. What kind of prayer are you going to be praying? You, go, you, you need to pray first. God, save me from myself. Deliver me from ungodliness, perversion. Deliver me all right, from, 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 from you know, being divided. Make me whole. It's one of the prayers we need to be praying today. We want wholeness. Because it's in wholeness that we can heal others. We've got to understand the heart of God. We've got to understand the mind of God. This is a day of the Lord. We cannot afford to be playing. We cannot afford this foreign ungodly spirit to be controlling us. We want to war with the dragon. We want to be able to overcome. Because the Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. By the words of their testimony, the blood of the Lamb, hallelujah, flows in our vein. The blood of the Lamb, amen, is the blood of the line of the tribe of Judah that roars. We want to have eyes like the cherubims. We want to be able to soar with wings, amen, of the seraphims. We want to come to the place where even the powers that be dreads to dread. We want to come there. Hallelujah. Listen to this. I'm reading Revelation chapter 12.
let me take it from verse 9 again. The great dragon was hauled down. The ancient serpent called the devil or, or Satan who led the whole world astray. It was hauled to the earth and his angels with him. Come on, this guy's been bound. <laughs> then I heard a voice. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now I've come salvation. We've got to track this meaning of salvation because this certainly is different from how we understand salvation, how we, how we practice salvation today. He said, now comes salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God. Now has come salvation, redemption, every aspect of our being. I know you gave your heart to Jesus, maybe some 10, 20, 50, God knows how long you gave your life to Jesus. But guess what? As the seed of that redemption, that salvation, impact every aspect of your faculty to the point that when accusation comes, when the spirit of accusation comes, you say, no, no, not here. Sorry. I'm, I'm not going to take that spirit. No, no, no. You, sorry, not in this house. Not in this home. That person, I know him. And if there's something, as a misunderstanding, I'm going to go to that person and ask. I get things cleared up. I'm just going to get things cleared up. So what happened? It's as simple as that. It is pride. It is, you know, uh, 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 there's, a, there's a word the Lord showed, gave me this morning. I hope I can remember that word. Because I believe those are the spirit that is driving the spirit of accusation. All right? Yeah. So, it says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now have come salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ for the accuser of our brothers or the brethren who, who accuses them before God day and night has been hold down has been chained down that's the word hold to chain down has been chained down they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony they did not love their life as much as to shrink from death as much as to shrink from death. What a value system. I'm going to round up here. They did not love their life as much as to shrink from death. In other words, they rather stand by the values of God than to give in. They say, I'd rather die. Say, death, come. I'll look at you death at face. <laughs> These guys are dangerous here. You see, this is a kind of Christianity we want to see. They do not love their life as much as to shrink from death. I know death don't come. Come make my day. You think Shadrach and, and uh, Meshach and Abednego we were not afraid when they said we're going to throw you in the fire and Daniel? They were afraid. But guess what? In their spirit man they were not afraid. You know why they were not afraid? They knew their God. You see, those who don't know their God are the people who compromise. Now when that spirit says, did you hear what the brother A say? Did you hear what that sister said about you? Did you hear? When they come to accuse, when they come to speak and bad mouth, you can say to them, please don't come back and say this thing to me again. Or else if you come back the next time, I'm going to rebuke you because you are not representing God. And then you're going to go back to that person they're talking about. I, I heard... That X, Y, Z was said. You, do, you, do, you, you did X, Y, Z. Is it true? Let's talk about this thing as brothers to brothers. People don't like that. Why? Something is wrong with our message of salvation. Something is wrong with our message of representation. Something is wrong with how we, we define values. Something is wrong. We've got to change. You see, these are the things that we need to address that will make our prayer fast. The Bible says, while Elijah was still praying, the fire came down. Why? Why? Why, Why did the fire come down? Because his life, his value system were in sync with that of heaven. You see, it's not the length of prayer. You see, it's not the longevity of prayer. It is how accurate, how, how, how visible you are before God. It is how aligned you are to the mind of God. It is how your life represents, amen, Christ on earth. That is what makes effective prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. It's not how long you pray. That's good. I, I mean, I... I pray. People who know me, I can pray three hours non-stop. Three hours non-stop. And I mean, I'm not joking. I can pray three hours non-stop. 
I know how to change my gears in the spirit. But I also understand that it's not the length of prayer that matters. All right, it is my alignment. It is my position. My posture. Amen. To the values of God, to the standard of God, because you can pray till Jesus comes. If your life is not in sync with the word of God, God will not answer the prayer of the wicked. The wicked means, amen, that your life, amen, is in rebellion. That your life, amen, is outside the order of God, outside the parameters of the spirit. Father, we thank you. We honor your name, Lord. We glorify you this day. We bless you. Thank you, Father, for your will, your word, your mind, your counsel. You're revealing yourself to us. You're showing us things that we need, to, we need to learn, we need to know in this new day. And Father, we do not flinch from this, from this truth. We embrace this truth, oh God. Though you may slay us with this word, but Father, we, we choose to accept. We fall on the sword. Like Rick Joyner said in that book, Final Quest. That book is coming to me again. Let's look for that book, Final Quest. He said, those who fell on the sword who died, got up again. But those who refused to fall on the sword were eaten, were destroyed by all kinds of evil spirits. We want to fall on the sword of the word of God. Fall on the sword of the word of God that we may live again. Help us, Father. Help us. Help us in this new day. We come to the altar and we present ourselves as a living sacrifice. We lay on the altar and we declare that we want to become that burnt offering. Nothing of us remaining. Let everything that will remain be a smoke. A smoke. Our life a smoke rising up to you. This is what we pray for. This is what we desire. This is what we want. This is what I want for myself and my family. That our life become a total burnt offering. That the ashes of yesterday is taken out, Lord, and taken to uh, uh, Valley Kindron. Ah, that, Lord, we will become a smoke unto you. Yes. We will become a smoke that cannot be stopped. Spirit of God, we thank you that you will continue to speak to us you will continue to align our hearts. You will continue to align our mind to your intentions in this new day. You will continue to impress upon us your demand and we will not shy away from it. We embrace it, O oh God. Though he slay me, we will not deny him. This is my prayer. Let a new church be awakened. Let a new church in South Africa be awakened. Let the spirit of the ecclesia an ecclesia that has not been captured an ecclesia that have not been robbed of our robe be awakened that we take our place once again in the land manifesting the glory of your presence Lord we thank you this morning that you will show yourself strong on our behalf you said those who know their God will will rise and shine. Ah, you are the son of righteousness. Shine upon us. Illuminate every aspect of our being. May no place be found for accusation in us. May no place be found for pride, godliness, wickedness in us. Bring us to the place of illumination. Beam your light on us. Focus your truth upon us, that we may be indeed that vessel ready and prepared to serve a generation. We thank you, Father God, we bless you, that we know this day your name will be hallowed in the earth, your name will be glorified in the earth, that a people will be found who have not bowed the knees. As Jeremiah found the sons of the Rechabites, and he tests them. He said, take wine and drink. <laughs> Jeremiah said, take wine. The Bible says he took them to a closet. He closed the door. He said, guys, take wine and drink. They said, no. 
our fathers made a covenant with God that no wine will touch our lips. Even though our fathers have gone, they are dead, but we still keep the value. We still keep the vow. And we still keep the promise. We will not drink, Jeremiah. Even though you are the prophet of God, we will not drink. Our value remains. Father, we are the sons of the Rechabite of our generation. We will not compromise to the wine of delusion. We will not compromise to the wine of perversion. We will not compromise to drink the wine of seduction. No, we declare that we will not sit on the table of Jezebel. We are a prophet. We are a prophetic generation with a different value system. We have not bowed and we have not burned because the fourth man is with us. Yes, we thank you, Father, for this new day, for this proclamation. May your name, may your glory, may your fame be seen. May the knowledge of your glory once again cover the earth as the water covers the sea. Do a new thing, O God, in us. We honor you. We honor you. Early on, we honor you. Thank you, Father. Don't stop. Continue to speak. Continue to speak to us. Thank you, Lord, for the fire of your spirit awakening the hearts of my brethren watching and the ones listening. Thank you that we will be able to go forth representing the order of this new day in accuracy, shoulder to shoulder, going forth proclaiming the name of our God in the land of the living. We thank you, Father. No man takes this honor unto himself. We have been called not after the order of Aaron, but after the everlasting priesthood of Melchizedek. Thank you. Honor and glory to you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want to thank everybody this morning that have connected with me in prayer. Heaven is looking for a group of people. I want you to be part of the mighty army God is raising in this season. And I'm not using that word lightly, no. There is an army, there is a mighty army being awakened. We just touch a dimension. In the book of Revelation, in the book of Zechariah, there are men called craftsmen, craftsmen, who would challenge the horns. There's a new order of people coming out who love not their life, not to the point of shrinking when death shows up. These are the army of the new day. These are the army of the new dawn. These are the army of God's righteousness emerging from the ashes of yesterday's fire wouldn't you be part of this army let's stand together and war together let's bring the victory that God desired to see it's time we wake up and get ourselves prepared and get ourselves aligned. Before it's too late. Come on. Let's create a bonfire. Let's, let's, let's create an atmosphere that will make it difficult for the enemy to find a place to accuse the church and the brethren. So I want to thank you this morning for being part of this broadcast. Please, once again, I want to appeal to you. Help me to share these messages. I mean, there's several, several of them. But I don't just want this message to, you know, to remain on my, my timeline. Share the link. Download them. Also have them on audio. 
you can download them please give it to your friends if you know people who are interested in prayer share with them let's continue to spread this truth as long as God continues to speak to me I will, I will always do what God will have me do no compromise I've dedicated the next 50 years of my life to standing for truth and proclaiming the will of God. Thank you. Please continue to support. Continue to pray for me. Continue to pray for my family. Continue to pray for this assignment. And if the Lord touches your heart to be a blessing financially to this work, please, I really appreciate it because we've got so many things that I, we need to buy. We need to. I, I really want to put up a studio where we can better you know broadcast and stream these things to places that you know need it the most and at, at least give us a quality also so thank you so very much everyone this morning for, for for being part of this wonderful time in the presence of god may god continue to keep you may he continue to lift you high may he continue to cause his grace his wisdom knowledge and understanding to flow into your life into your space May you continue to go forth and prosper in the name of God. May no power, may no spirit of accusation stop you. May you continue to travel light. May the name of God be mighty in your midst. God bless you. I appreciate every man of God, woman of God, every person that have joined this morning. Please continue to stand for the Lord. God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful morning. Bye-bye.